Hey! Hey, you! Hey! Over here! My name's Albert Isaac, and, um, you might find it hard to believe, but I'm actually a physician from 1922 who got caught in a time warp and thrown into the future. And wow, what a time to be alive! Mind you, we haven't even discovered nuclear energy and antibiotics back where I come from, whereas you guys are already thinking of living on Mars? That's just crazy! I've been really fascinated just learning about all the discoveries you guys have made, and this makes me even more curious! What will the reality of the next 100 years look like for humanity? You got time? Let's take a walk! Frankly, your generation's use of technology is quite astounding. I recently discovered how you guys have created artificial intelligence to think and work on our behalf. Is it possible that AI will be able to predict how diseases advance and improve doctors' ability to provide health care to all? In any case, I've noticed you've got many bright people here. Like these two here. Let's ask them. Oh, hey. Hi there. Uh, funny that you mentioned viruses. Uh, COVID has actually taught us that uh, pregnant women may not always be able to see their doctors on time. So together with ASTAR, we're developing a smartphone app that uses LiDAR technology as well as artificial intelligence to help them and their doctors better keep track of their baby's growth so that we can act earlier with the right information. How about you, Joe? Yeah, in fact, with specialized AI and uh, deep machine learning, these have already begun to make inroads into cancer care. And I'm sure that in the next century, we'll have the tools to keep healthy people healthy and prevent cancer, really be more proactive instead of reactive. And with the groundbreaking work that we're already doing in NUS Joanna Oncology, I'm absolutely confident that we're going to cure cancer in the next century. Amazing! Thanks, gentlemen. Creating bots and AI is one thing, but what I'm still wrapping my head around is how you guys have got our human DNA all mapped out. Seriously! That makes me wonder, do you think we can eventually modify DNA and cure diseases once and for all? Why don't we sip tea with this lovely lady and get her thoughts? So, you wanted to know about gene therapy? Well, gene modification therapy becomes more precise, safer and more efficient. And the top prize is diagnosing and correcting a genetic defect in the fetus as it develops in the womb before the disease manifests. A one-time intervention that corrects a mutated gene and returns it to normal using precision gene editing. We may even be able to do this in the embryo before it becomes a fetus, or in the gametes themselves before they form the embryo. This may even include genes that lead to late-onset diseases like cancer. Imagine curing cancer in the womb or earlier. Wow! Fascinating stuff! This gets me thinking that perhaps we will eventually be able to help humans overcome degenerative diseases, cancers and all the bad stuff, whilst enhancing and prolonging good health. Perhaps, could we eventually re-engineer all the tissues in our body and extend our healthy lifespan? Let's have a chat! Hi! Did you know we're all on a health trajectory? Our individual trajectories start to be programmed from the time we were conceived, and some of this programming can be passed through generations. We are starting to find the switches that promotes physical and mental health while still developing within the mother's womb. These switches are lifestyle choices that mothers can make before and during pregnancy. Then we can raise a whole new healthier generation. In addition, we will also find a switch that changes normal ovarian tissue to cancer cells. These switches may be genetic, and epigenetic changes that can be manipulated to prevent or to stop cancer progression. Crazy stuff! Who would have thought that one day we just might be able to control disease outcomes at the flick of a switch? Oh, hello there! Oh, hi! Do I know you? How can I help you? Will we ever unlock the key to living forever? Ah, I see. Well, a woman's ovaries may be the key to a long, healthy life, in addition to reproductive potential, due to its hormones being critical to many functions associated with youth. Finding the molecular events that takes place in the ovaries which lead to aging and menopause means that we can potentially delay biological aging and thus prevent or delay physical and mental diseases associated with reproductive aging. That's a pretty interesting take on things. As we explore increasingly wild ideas of surviving and thriving as a human race, perhaps artificial bodies could take over the job of reproduction completely. What do you think, Matt? Well, 
The idea is not to grow humans outside of the womb, but to produce a physiological replica of the human womb, to continue to nurture the very small fetus that is born too early. Now, we may see an increase in the number of very preterm births due to environmental changes and maternal diseases. And the artificial womb allows very small fetuses to mature in their own time ex utero to avoid the complications of being born too early. It's been a thoroughly enjoyable walk so far, and I've learned so much today. Which begs the question, what does the future of education look like? With such an overload of knowledge out there, wouldn't it be great if we could just map knowledge from brain to a sorted brain, much like a hard disk drive? What do you think, sir? Well, oh, I don't think that's going to be a really good idea because even the largest hard drives will have limited capacity and it will also take all the fun out of learning. I think it's actually a better approach to imbue in our students a healthy curiosity and good data and digital literacy skills so they can learn for themselves throughout their lives. So I think that's the better approach to teach our students to be lifelong learners who can gain quick insight and have a natural curiosity. Boy, my head's really exploding with all the new knowledge I've gleaned today. Feels kind of like I really need a break to process all this. Somewhere far away, nice and secluded. Like Mars, yay or nay? Oh, maybe this gentleman has some insights to share. You know, with environmental stresses such as extreme heat waves, rising sea levels and food and energy crises, it is not surprising that exploration is now underway to find other habitable planets. As dreamers and thought leaders, I hope we can start preparing for exoplanetary life, which we may not experience in our lifetimes, but may be the impending reality for generations to come. How do we repopulate another exoplanet? How do we travel from here to there safely and possibly have babies en route? We need to figure out how human pregnancies and childbirth will behave off planet Earth and predict the challenges that we will face with different gravities, different oxygen saturations and novel microbial life. Let me assure you, we have already started asking these questions and trying to replicate this environment here in our NUS laboratory. We will be ready. Booking my ticket right now!